patron, take them away. Okay, guys, um, I'm, I'm kind of going to get my crystal ball out and do a bit of a forecast. And I'll tell you where it came from. I was watching Jordan, so it's a little salute to you, my friend. Hope the weather's quite nice over your part of the world from Trade Delicious. And if you haven't come across Trade Delicious, do check him out. Um, he is pretty good. I'll drop a link to his channel in the comments um but check jordan out so a little salute to you my friend and i am still jealous that you live over in australia and have all the nice beaches and all of that sort of thing but at least we don't have sharks biting our legs off every time we go in the ocean so swings and roundabouts swings and roundabouts so apart from that why am i doing this well i was watching him do his live stream the other night and he posed a question where do you see the pound dollar at the end of the year what price and i quickly looked on my phone because that's where i was kind of watching it and i did a very rough analysis and i came up with about 150 to 152 um, and i thought well i'll back that up by showing you where that came from because um it's a bit ambitious and it's like oh it's a bit ambitious there scruff are you sure about that one and i'm like mm, yeah yeah. Um, but am I sure? Well, we'll see. Because my theory is a chart is a chart. Okay. The difference between the charts is the time frame. If I took the time stamp off a time uh, a chart, you wouldn't be able to tell me whether that's a monthly or a minute. You genuinely couldn't. So what I thought I'd do is I'd switch it on and I'll show you where that price came from. And it might give you an insight into how to read a chart as well. Um, because time frames are important. If I'm looking for today, I'll look at an hour. If I'm looking for the next week, I'll look at four hours. If it's the next month, I'll look at a day. If I'm looking for extended six months plus, I start looking at weeklies. And that's where I saw this. So let me show you. So if I flick that over. So... If I come out to a weekly chart, this is um, cable. What I'm looking for is major drives that will affect future price. So the first thing I look for is the last time it had a major drive and how long that major drive lasted for. Well, you can see there's a high point here before it fell away and there's a lower point there. Well, that was March and that is february okay so if you come back here and we draw in a measuring tool we can see how far that move was okay so just get me a measuring tool so from down this area all the way up to there okay that was 336 days okay so the best part of a year to move that far okay so if i transpose that onto the start of this year that is pretty much a year's worth of data okay so i'll just pull that across and i'm looking for the first week which is this candle here so if i drag that onto kind of roughly where that is so that's the start of this year that'll give me a grid point up here so i'll put a nice thick line on so we can see it so where's that well that's um 149 so i actually wasn't too far off just on the form it's saying 150 152 because you've got to think this is a year's worth of data but it's not quite enough for what I need, all right? So what I now need to do is transpose how far a retracement can go if this up move is going to continue from that point, okay? Now, there is an argument to say that 
I should have started it down here because that is the up move. But what I'm looking for is a continuation of the year starting this week. And the last time it moved was that. So, and I've got maybe 35 days grace in it anyway, which would be a couple of weeks, which would bring it right the way down here anyway. Okay. And what you got to remember is this is just rough analysis rather than pin accurate. Okay. But fibs are pin accurate because they'll show me a top and they'll show me a bottom. So if I just naturally pull on a retracement, I can see the move started up there and it got all the way down to there. And again, if you look at the way the fib lined up, they line into key levels that I mark into the charts. Okay. And as you see, the different colors. Now, because of the different colors, that means they come from different time frames. So this single fib on this time frame is marrying up to other time frames perfectly to the pip. So is it reasonable to assume that this extension can create a zone of interest? Yes, it can. And that zone of interest is here. And if I just draw a rectangle into it, just like so, Oops. there this is the upper target limit it looks miles away but as we've just seen it's roughly about a year away it might do 18 months we don't know but it's an upper target as to where the market can possibly come to now this line here is christmas day for this year um sort of marking the end of the trading year if you like and where is the target point? Well, if I said 52, well, the upper target point is 52.86 with a lower target point of 4899, 14.899. So I don't think I was a million miles off. Now, time will tell. There's a lot of other factors. What I'm assuming is the markets are going to settle themselves down. And what I mean by settling themselves down, I mean, we're not going into war. Um, it could be the end of the war soon. That's over in Europe, in the Ukraine. Um, we also are looking at pressures over in the US, you know, which may pull the dollar down, even though the dollar is really strong. You've got to think of supermarket mentality as well. If something is really overpriced, eventually people don't buy it anymore. They just want to sell it. And if it's going to sell, it's naturally going to push the pound up. And the pound, the UK, because we are stabilizing now. We had a bit of a torrent year last year with three prime ministers. Hopefully, we're going to have a little bit of plain sailing. So that kind of comes into it. But from a technical perspective, that's how I've worked it down. Because when it comes to fundamental, I'm not big on fundamentals. My attitude to it is very simple. If I don't understand it, I don't trade it. But a chart hasn't lied to me pretty much since I started. And there's a big buy word that you see us use all the time. In fibs, we trust because fibs work. If you can lock in a top and a bottom, they give you a true ratio of where a market can achieve. And that's the way I look at it. So that that's my viewpoint that's where i see it for the end of the year um who knows might be wrong and if i am wrong well at least my analysis was sound and i understood why i did it but if i'm right it's exactly the same answer you live and by you live and die by your choices and that's what trading is except when we day trading we're doing it on a micro scale so as always guys trade well keep your risk managed but above all, do what you love and the money will follow. See you all in the next one.